Hello, everyone. Welcome. Today we will uh, continue talking about um, work and energy, and we also some of the recommended problems. So let me start with a quick recap. So this is like chapter seven in the in your book, and so on Monday we introduce work by considering work done by a constant force as uh, the displacement times the component of the force along the displacement. And we said that the unit of work was Newton meter and it was called joules. So to make this more systematic, we introduce a mathematical machinery called scalar product. And we showed that this work uh, we defined was equivalent to a scalar product between force vector and the displacement vector. And we considered a work done by, uh, by a non-constant force, by a varying force. And we introduced integral or like, if you like line integral of force as a definition of work. And we gave an example to this from work done by a spring. And we um, introduce work energy principle, which says that net work done on a system is equal to change in its total kinetic energy. And finally, we solve, I think, this problem and this problem. So today I am planning to solve two or three more problems and answer your questions. So here's the problem. A mass M is attached to a spring, which is held stretched a distance X by a force F like this, and then released. The spring compresses like this, pulling the mass and assuming there's no friction, determine the speed of the mass when the spring returns to A, its normal length, X is equal to zero and B, half of its original extension, X is equal to X over two, okay. So the mass is attached to the spring and somebody pulls it a distance X with some force F. And when released, the spring starts compressing, pulling the mass along with itself. And the question is, what is the speed of the mass when spring returns to here or half of here, which is here? So what did we learn this week that we can apply to this problem? And that's, I, th I think the nice thing about this, right? You, okay, we have another answer. We say energy. Maybe I can go back and look what we learned, right? So this is like area under the force curve is equal to work. We have dot products. This is some spring. Um, work energy principle, right? Work energy principle. Can we use work energy principle in this problem? Maybe I can write it. So, um, so initially the mass is at rest. Okay, I know this is easy problem, maybe for some of you, but I think it doesn't uh, hurt to be systematic and careful, which can pay us back later, like in more complicated examples. But let's just be careful and a little bit slow to begin with. Um, so the mass is at rest initially, right? And we want to find its kinetic energy when it reaches here. And what is given is, okay, we have another answer. So W, so w net is equal to change in kinetic energy. That's, what did we call this? 
This is work energy principle. Okay. This is called work energy principle. Okay, you can see it. Good. Now I want to calculate the network done on this mass. Let's look at the forces, right? When it is released, this force disappears, right? Because that's what we are interested in. When it is released, it is the moment we don't have this force anymore. And what forces do we have? Maybe you can tell me. So I want to identify the forces, like I think one of you suggested. What forces do we have on the mass? F, right? And I mean, the force coming from spring, right? Something like this. Let's call this F spring. And it is equal to, you are saying it is minus kx, right? Which is equal to minus, is it minus or plus? Is it minus or plus? I am confused. Minus, minus, minus. Okay. If you guys are seeing minus, it's minus. It's kx. Do I have any other force? That's it, right? Actually, there is like mg, like down and like this, but I think it doesn't matter for this problem, at least since there's no friction. Now I want to calculate this, uh, the work done by this force, right? Then W net, what did we say? I said integral of spring force as a vector dotted onto dl as a vector. And let me see what these things are. So fs as a vector is like this, right? And its uh, vector direction is what I had. Let's write this. So minus kx times, this is the direct direction unit vector i, I'm using this i, j, something like that. And I need to write an expression for this guy. And this guy I can already see from the figure, right? This is x, this is dx, like infinitesimal along this direction. And his direction is also i hat. So it is d x i hat. And these two things are dotted into each other. Finally, what is the integral limits? So, okay, maybe I can put this um, x prime, not to confuse myself, x prime. And the integral limits, it starts from x is right here, x prime is equal to x. So initially it is x. And when it fully compresses to its initial position here, x is equal to zero. Right? Now I can take this integral. Okay, i dot i here, i dot i is one. So I only have an integral minus k x prime dx prime. And I know how to take this integral. It is minus k over two x prime squared, right? And now let's put the integral limits. The limit is initially x to zero. Now I'm going to calculate these limits. When I first put this to here, it is zero, zero minus. And now I substitute this to here and it is minus a half K 
x squared. Now this is equal to 1 over 2 k x squared, right? So now we found the network done. What is the next step? But we need to find change in kinetic energy. Change in kinetic energy, delta K is equal to one half M V final squared minus one half M V initial squared. Yes, exactly. And initial is initially the mass is at rest. So this one is zero, but this whole thing is one half M V final squared. So I think that's it, right? Now I use work energy principle, one half M V final squared is equal to one half K X squared. I can cancel these and I have V final is equal to so K over M X squared. But I have to be careful. Let's see what is given in the problem. Like the problem says mass, blah, 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 distance X and force F, right? So for this force, this is the distance. And I have an unknown here, K. So K is not given. So I have to find K. How do I find K? There is no K in the problem. Magnitude of this initial force equal to K X. We can find K to be F over X. And if we substitute this to here, this will be equal to um, okay, it is F over M times X. Okay, any objections? This is the final answer. So this one was A. Now let's continue with B. So what is the kinetic energy when it, it returns to half its original extension, right? So all I need to do is change these integral limits. So the integral limits now in this case, W net is equal to, I am going to write from here, initially it's X, finally it's X over two, and inside I have minus K X prime, the X prime, this is equal to minus a half K X prime squared X to X over two. And I put the limits minus a half K X square over four minus minus a half k x square and if i do this i think this is what this is k x squared and this should be equal to one half m v final squared by work energy principle then the final is equal to square root um, three over eight k over m x squared, and this actually equal to three over eight f over m x. Why don't we take F when computing W net. Because um, it is released, right? Because this says 
a spring which is held stretch at a distance x by force f and released at the moment it is released the box is stationary and at this moment on there's only one force and that force is the force coming from spring so f is gone at this moment and we apply work energy principle after that moment because before that moment the box is at rest can you repeat part b so in the part b here i'm interested in so when it is released it's over here and when it is when it returns to have its original extension returns so it's like original extension is this and half of this original extension is this and the question is what is the kinetic energy or what is the velocity or speed when it returns to this point and to find this point i need to find total work done on the mass by the spring from this point to this point right and that's what i do here it goes from this point which is here to this point which is half and if i do the integral i find this total uh, work done network done on the mass and i said okay this should be equal to change in kinetic energy but initially it is zero so it should be equal to final kinetic energy and i just solve it i feel like it is three over eight did i mess it up does anybody else have um three over four oh i forgot one half okay 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 good 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 this one right oh, okay yes that's correct so yes this guy oops so this guy i forgot yes thank you that's a good point It's correct. Thank you. Okay, here is uh, the actually this suggested problem is 64, but to be able to follow, solve 64, we need to look at 63. So I put both of them. Okay. So the question is like this: How much work is done by the horizontal force Fp, which is 150 Newton, on the 18 kilogram block of this figure? So this force. This is like a horizontal force acting on this block. When force pushes the block five meter up along the 32 degree frictionless incline. So here's the question. There's like a force and there's like a block and the block is on an inclined plane and the force is pushing the block up. What is the, what is the net work done? How much work is done by FP? So maybe I can go ahead and start. So, okay. So maybe I can do this. So the displacement, so this is, this is FP and this is, these are both vectors D, D, okay. And I'm trying to find network done by P, which should be equal to force P dotted onto D. And this is magnitude of force P, magnitude of D, and cosine of angle between them. So these are all given, so I can just calculate. Good. 636, 636 joules or Newton meter. Does anybody have the same number? Hopefully I got the right result. Okay, so B, 
Okay. B. What does B ask? How much work is done by the gravitational force on the block during the this, this displacement? So that's the gravitational force acting on the block. Right? Something like this. Maybe I can put F gravitation is equal to mg. And work done by gravitation is equal to force gravitation dotted on again D. But um, I know this is going to be cosine, but it is going to be a projection of this. So it's going to project this force on this and the component of gravity along the displacement is in the opposite direction, right? This force had two components like this and like this, and this component was in the same direction with displacement. This gravity has two components. One is along the displacement, the other is perpendicular to the displacement, but the component along the displacement is in the opposite direction, so there will be a minus. So for this, I'm going to put a minus and G D, I think it's going to be something like sine theta, right? So this is basically, so this one is also theta. So this one is 90. So we are interested in here. This is 90 minus theta. And this component along this here is this one times cosine of this. But cosine of this angle is sine. And I have sine here. So we are only looking at one thing. And that is how much work is done by gravitational force, nothing else. And if I put these numbers, okay, I don't like this color. If I put these numbers, let's do this. 467 minus 467 joules. See how much work is done by the normal force. Let's look at normal force. Normal force is, oops. Maybe this is good, I can use a different color. Okay. This is normal force. How much work is done by this normal force? Zero, right? Why? So work is scalar, that's correct. And scalar negative is scalar as well as positive. So some scalar number can be negative but it doesn't mean it is a vector, okay? And here, this is zero because uh, normal force is perpendicular to displacement vector, okay? Maybe I can do this. Since F normal is a vector, it's perpendicular, okay? So don't be confused with minus sign, okay? This is a minus sign and it is still a scalar and it's just a number with negative number. So it's just still doesn't have a vector. So that means uh, movement is against the direction of the force, right? The direction of force was like this and its component was like this, but the motion was in the opposite direction. Hopefully that makes sense. D, what is the speed of the block? Assume that it is zero initially. Okay, what do we do? What do I do? Speed, what is the speed of the block? What do I need? W net, yes. So work energy 
principle network done is equal to and change in kinetic energy network done is wp plus wg plus wn which is zero but doesn't matter is equal to change in kinetic energy it's initially addressed and at the end it is like one half v final squared minus one half m v initial squared so this one is zero this one is zero, then V final is equal to two over M WP plus WG. And there's like a square root. Is that correct? Hopefully, yes. Yes, good. Let's calculate these numbers. meter per second. Okay. And now we can come to the suggested problem. So this says, okay, so I, I'm confused here. So what happened to the uh, potential energy, right? Why, why didn't we get the potential energy? Did we mess up? Like you said, yes, somebody is asking, why don't we have potential energy? Potential energy. What happened? I forgot to take the potential energy, right? Yes, somebody says work includes potential energy. Anybody, any, any other answers? What happened to potential energy? Right? We put WG as positive. We put WG as negative, but its value is, WG is minus, so it is this, plus this, which is this minus this. So is that clear? There is no potential energy because we don't know anything about potential energy yet. So right now, what we know is work energy theorem. And we know that whatever the circumstances, the network done is equal to change in kinetic energy and we calculated the network done and in, inside this network there is also force of gravity later we will see there are other ways to solve this problem like considering so-called potential energy but we don't know it yet hope this makes sense so maybe we can repeat that okay let's do this repeat problem 63 Assuming a coefficient of friction, this. What do I do? So if I have a coefficient of kinetic friction, what should I do? So after this, let's get this problem done and we can finish the class after this. Any suggestions? How do I put the friction? What is friction? What is friction force? Mg cos Mg blah blah. But there is also this guy, right? How do I calculate the net normal force? Let's we need to first find an expression for F net what this ex expression should be. So here's what I suggest. Um, maybe I can use 
this blue is fine. So along this direction, right? And along this other red direction. So I know uh, along this direction, there's only this one. And this guy has two components, this, like this and this, right? And this guy also, FP also has two components, this one and this and this. So then the, um, this component of FP and the same component of MG along this line should be equal to normal force, right? Otherwise the block would be moving along this. So I use this. So I say F, I don't like this color. Okay, F normal is equal to. First, I need to project this guy and projection of this guy is F P times sine theta plus. Now I need to project this guy and this guy is M G times um, sine of this is cosine theta, cosine theta. And now I need to add work done by, okay, maybe I can then force of friction, which is going to be acting in the opposite direction. Like this, right? Force friction. Friction force is equal to so mu s or mu k by the net force with the friction force. So I want to calculate uh, friction force, and this is mu s or mu k. Let me put like F normal. Kinetic, right? But there's also static friction. What do I do with static friction? Okay, someone says me yes. There's static friction too, right? So what do I do with static? There's like static and kinetic friction. And I want to calculate work done by friction. So which force sh should I take, kinetic or static? Kinetic. Yes, somebody says kinetic, why? Why not static friction? What's the reason for not taking any static friction in the calculation of work? Because it's moving, right? Yes. But it is static one important in this situation. We are looking for the work and it is related to the displacement and movement, exactly. So static force is non-zero when it is at rest. And when it is at rest, the dis displacement is zero. So the force times displacement is zero. Once it starts moving, there is no static kinetic friction anymore. There is only kinetic friction. And the kinetic friction does the work for a displacement D. So that's what we are trying to calculate here. Okay. And now this is equal to, because it, it, they are in the opposite direction, this is minus Fp sine theta plus mg cosine theta times the distance is d. Now I can calculate the same way, v final is equal to this is again two over M W P plus W G plus W F. Okay, 
maybe I can calculate this number real quick. Minus 23.2 joules. Okay, now things make sense. 4.02, 4.02 meter per second. And the final width friction is less than the final, okay? Maybe we can call this prime. Yes, 4.02, good. I'm glad I got the right result. <laughs> Okay, this is all I wanted to do today. I found 79 now, you're right. So, okay. I think my calculator missed. So I do one more time, 32 sine times 150, 79.4. This one is, yes, that's true. So this one is, 79.5. Somehow I found a completely different answer. So this is minus 112. So this one, this one, and I, so let me do it one more time. 0.1 kinetic friction coefficient. So this is, okay, this is, I think there must be like a mu s here. But I'm not sure about the numbers, okay? Yes, I found, I found that to 114. Maybe since you also found that I'm now more confident. 114.5. Now I can calculate the whole thing. This is 2.5 meter per second. How about that? Why put mu s? Oh, this is mu k. This one is mu k. Good. So did anybody else get the same number? 2.5. So why did we use minus and why did we not use potential energy? So here, uh, because we don't know about potential energy, right? So we didn't introduce anything about potential energy yet. And what we know is work energy principle. And work energy principle says network done on an on an object is equal to changing its kinetic energy. For this, we calculated, we identify all forces. And among all these forces, there's like FP, there is MG, there is normal force, and there's friction force. That's it, there's nothing else. If we are sure that we took all the forces, we are good, right? Now we calculated the work done by each force and we didn't omit anything. And then we applied the work energy principle and we found the kinetic energy. We will see when we introduce a quantity like potential energy, it is going to give us an alternative way to solve this problem. And we will then think about potential energy, but now we don't have any potential energy. And if you wanna know, we actually took care of potential energy like this, right? We identified the force coming from gravity and we calculated the force times net displacement. If you really look at this quantity, this is actually minus mgh, right? This is mg and amount of height difference, this is mgh, and we actually took care of uh, potential energy. But we didn't call it potential energy like you, like you are used to. So the minus here is this, right? If, okay. So force is, uh, the work is defined as the dot product, like scalar product of two vectors. And this means uh, the first and the second and the cosine. 
But here, if you look at this cosine of, okay, the, this is D, this is the force Mg, and cosine of this angle is actually negative. Cosine actually takes care of this. But the more uh, intuitive way to see this, the force, the force which does the work along, is along this direction, right? But the motion is along this direction. So the force and the motion are in the opposite direction. So the work done by this force on this motion is negative. It's doing the negative work. Thanks for coming. I'll see you guys on Monday. Take care.